Well, a very good afternoon, Florence, back in studio. Of course, we are coming to you live from Peponi School, where the ITF Women World Tour has been ongoing uh, for the better part of this week. A lot of action from different teams. Uh, remember, it's a tournament that attracted more than 35 countries, uh, that more than 15 countries, sorry, and more than 35 players having to be able to grace the court and uh, fight it out to uh, see whether they can be able to uh, propel themselves in terms of even the IT, ITF rankings. It's been exemptional. As much as we, our Kenyan team, were not able to go into the semi-finals today, we had the semi-finals uh, of the singles being, being staged. Currently underway is the final of the double pitting Paulina, uh, double Paulina and Tiffany uh, against uh, a Russian duo of uh, uh, Sophia and Alia, uh, Maldiva. Uh, it's an exceptional one and so tight to call. Uh, we'll also be giving you an update of how the semi-finals fared in the singles. Uh, remember, Kenya was represented by three uh, tennis players. That is uh, not three, uh, but three were given a, a ticket direct to the main draw and later uh, 11 had to square, we had 11 players having to square out to, maintain, to make sure that they secure uh, that opportunity to play in the main draw that held 24 uh, players. It's been exceptional. Uh, you've been part of the action for the better part of this week uh, and I think you have been able to cover all this interesting action uh, for most of this junior. Remember uh, this is a second tire or rather a, a competition that is just below the, the, the world uh, tennis tour or the WTA tour uh, and, and it's bond is one of the designed uh, formats by the ITF to make sure that they help uh, the juniors on their way up to the senior level that they can be able to harness their skill in the tennis game. We have not been able to uh, lucky to uh, get to the national team or even some of the players who represent in Kenya to just have a conversation about the experience. Remember this is one of the competitions that they were using to prepare for the all Africa games uh, that is set to kick off uh, around 16th of August uh, or 19th I'm, I'm, I'm correct I think it's the 19th of August. Uh, that is in the course of uh, of this month. And this was just but one of the platforms that they were using to prepare as much as they were not able to make it as far as possible. Uh, we have not been able to talk to, to them. Uh, I think they left early. Uh, not a lot of in terms of the excitement, maybe because most of the team are, uh, are not local teams. But again, you can't st you, you, you'll stand and notice that we have had players who have been so exemption. Remember the number one seed uh, who is in the final and even the number eight seed from Burundi. Those those are the two players that will be playing in the final of the singles. It, it's been exceptional. But lucky for us, we have been able to get hold of the tournament director, Mother Tirob, uh, who I think uh, is better even positioned to tell us about the excitement. Has the tournament been able to live up to the expectation? Or rather, uh, has things gone as they were planned on paper? Uh, Madam Mother Tirob, first of all, congratulations on being able to stage a, a, a world class event. It's been exceptional. And uh, let's talk about the preparation, first of all, uh, what we you had to bring on board to make sure the tournament is a success. Thank you very much. We just first of all want to thank you for being able to partner with us in this event in terms of uh, media coverage. You've been good and you've been uh, consistent. Uh, yes, it's been very tough, first of all, putting it on the calendar. It's something that as Tennis Kenya has been planning for a very long time. But due to finances involved, as you know, it is a $15,000 prize money and uh, there are two legs of it so we needed to raise thirty thousand dollars just for prize money and then we raised around uh, one ten thousand dollars for organization so in terms of finances it is uh, very challenging yeah. and that is why it's been very hard for kenya to host an event like this nevertheless itf came through for us through the grand slam development fund and they were able to give us some money to run to go into the prize money and so we've been able to raise money to run this event and we are very excited because it's a milestone we know it is good for transition of our players from senior to junior event. As you know, it is the lowest in terms of a uh, women tour, $15,000 prize money. The next one is 25, goes to 50, 60, and 80, then 100,000. So our goal is to improve or may have more of this in the year because it's good for our juniors. I know there are teams that were not able to honor the competition due to maybe logistic challenge or rather some even did not come. Uh, in, in terms of the teams that you invited, I know not all of them were able to honor the event, but do you feel that maybe some of the countries are missing out has affected the tournament? Yes, it has because uh, the, one of the biggest things that affected the tournament was that we had four legs 
of the event in our calendar. We had anticipated to start in July and run for four weeks. But unfortunately, the funds were not available to cover the first two weeks. So we had to cancel, and that affected the overall uh, participation of the tournament. So we had people who, wasn't, who weren't even sure that uh, we'll do the two legs, and that suspicion uh, kind of uh, reduced the numbers, withdrawal, and the fact that sometimes it doesn't make sense for them financially to come for two legs. They prefer if it is longer so that they are able to take advantage of the, of the tour. I, I know we don't have a Kenyan in the finals for, for the singles, but again, uh, it's good also to notice that to note that most of the time our Kenyan tennis players are forced to have to compete in different competitions outside the country. Then they come back because they, most of them actually don't get as many competitive matches as possible. But uh, having not been able to have a Kenyan qualify for the finals, do you think it says a lot in terms of our tennis level, or what can we, what lesson can we be able to pick from that? Uh, first, I will state the numbers that we had in this uh, tournament. First, only 14 and above yeah. year olds are allowed to play. And then uh, you d they didn't have any ranking points because they've never uh, had to travel. It's expensive to travel for these tournaments. So, of course, in the draw, they either had to go through wild cards or play in the qualies. And yeah. so we had three people who got the wild cards and we had four who played the qualifiers. One of those managed to get into the main draw but lost in the first round. Yeah. So we had Fatia who played the main round. The, we had Angela Okutoi, yeah. we had Judy, and we had Faith. Yeah. Out of those, three of them, oh, we had, uh, and then we had Alicia playing the qualifiers. We had, uh, um, who else played the qualifiers? Alicia, um, I, I remember the other two, or oh, Shania, yeah, and there was a third person who played the qualies. But um, uh, I think uh, Alicia, or oh, there was Rose. Yeah. Osumwa, who played the qualifiers. Uh, nonetheless, they had a lot of experience seeing the level of tournament that they need to play. The ones who played the main draw were able to get four ITF World Junior rankings, uh, women ranking, and then one I, uh, WTA ranking, yeah. Yeah. and about uh, prize money of about 30,000 mm -hmm. because they lost in the second round. Yeah, okay. The winner of this event wins 10 WTA points and gets uh, 100 ITF World Tour points and get a prize money of 237,000. Okay. But does it mean by the virtue of them participating in this particular one, then they are going to gain points in terms of their ranking and they're going to stand somewhere in terms of the world ITF ranking? Yes, they got points and so it was very exciting for us because then it means it was worth it yeah. hosting the event and all the trouble that uh, Tennis Kenya went yeah. to make sure that this event was on the calendar. Exemption for, for the whole week I think KUTV has provided coverage for this particular tournament and uh, you, we, we have noticed that uh, Sadan Ahiman, I think uh, she was the one who eliminated Angela, uh, and, and you can notice that she's one of the players who have been able to uh, graduate uh, from an ITF academy. I think most of them that are probably are in the final have been able to be part of the ITF uh, centers. Uh, we have a particular one in Kenya. Let's talk about how it's, uh, it's supposed to change uh, the whole situation in tennis, uh, in, 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 ten in the tennis game, and maybe how it can be able to contribute to future tennis players being able to stage uh, to not participate just in the ITF World Tour but even in other different uh, international competitions. Uh, the match between Sada and uh, Angela has been uh, was the most exciting match in yeah. fact most uh, uh, fans think it should have been the final. Yeah. Uh, it was good because it pitted two juniors who know each other very well. They are both in the ITF uh, centers. Yeah. Uh, Sada has not graduated yet. She's yeah. still, I think, she's 18 years old, yeah. and Angela is 15 years old. So Angela was playing her senior, and who have played in the same environment. So I think it shows us that having more of these centers yeah. is very important, and that even the one in Nairobi is doing very well. That they can play with somebody who's in the center in Morocco mm -hmm. and perform exceptionally well. Yes. And the fact that it opened the eyes of uh, the other juniors to see that it's possible. Yes. Uh, it was also exciting to note that um, uh, Sada is ranked 10 yeah. in the ITF Junior World Ranking. She's the top 10, while uh, uh, Angela yeah. is 300. Yeah. So I think Angela really put her A game to it. But it was uh, good that she lost to a finalist. So I think she has proved herself that she can play anywhere in the world. Uh, on the ITF centers, we know that it is enhances high performance, mm -hmm. and that's what we need. Because uh, here in Kenya, the biggest hindrance to, to sport in general, and especially tennis, is uh, school hours.
the school hours means that, uh, and then the facilities. Meaning kids cannot leave school and be able to put in the number of hours that are put in an ITF center. For example, ITF center, they put in six hours of training a day. In an, our normal situations, even putting in six hours a week is a challenge. Yeah. And so they cannot compete uh, with the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Education system, they do an online system. And uh, that is why they're able to put in those hours. So in terms of juniors, I think that's the way to go. Yeah to have them maybe doing online or unless our system allows them to do that. And it's good that I'm seeing this is from Kenyatta University. So Kenyatta University should also offer these kids enough uh, scholarships yeah. so that we don't have them all going away to the US and then we don't have seniors because our the ones who are supposed to play after 18 years, there is no uh, transition. And our universities do not uh, have facilities or capacity to hold them here. Yeah. So we have several who are out there. We have Stephanie Mbaya, yeah. who actually came here and watched and cheered uh, uh, the, the girls here on. So it was good that she was here, but she couldn't stay here. So she had to go and play in the U.S. and many others. So we want the universities also to be able to open um, we open channels to be able to accommodate this player. Yes. Has the tournament lived up to the expectation power? What you expected? More than that, I think in terms of organization, Tennis Kenya has always uh, proved to have no problem, logistical preparation, especially that we're having this event off-site. We've not had an event for Tennis Kenya out of Nairobi Club, which you know is the home of uh, Tennis Kenya. So we, But we really are happy with the partnership with Peponi School. I think they've gone out of their way to make us very comfortable here and give us these facilities and as a sponsorship because we d they did not charge us for these facilities and they've really been uh, very cooperative and they've given us whatever we require. Mm. So I think the police school has also, you know, uh, be, rose to the occasion yeah. to partner with us in that way. I love how you mentioned about Peponi having been to offer the facilities. Now talk, let's talk about how corporate, different corporate input, input even private organization, how their input in organizing some of these international uh, competition, uh, they play a big role in making it sure that it's a success. Let's talk about the corporates you have been able to attract uh, or, to, or to bring on board and how uh, corporates and even private sector are important for a particular tournament to be able to make tennis a success. Uh, we've had uh, uh, corporate sponsors for our other different events, yeah. like uh, the Kenya Open, yeah. which has been sponsored by Britain for some time now. Yeah. We have uh, Rentworks that sponsors Karen Open. So w w it's very important for corporates to come in and support such events. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't gov have enough of those corporates uh, coming through because, uh, you know, tennis is an individual event. Yeah. You can see there is not a much crowd, and that is what corporates like in yeah. terms of uh, coverage and popular popu popularity. Yeah. So they would go to more popular games where it attracts crowds for yeah. in terms of... Because um, for them, it is what they can get yeah. in, in return yeah. for the sport. And sometimes tennis is not uh, that popular for it to attract such a... Uh, public uh, whatever that they yeah, would uh, yeah. give yeah. but we'll still call upon them to partner in any small way that we can be able to push these events forward for our juniors yes Sandy Sarabona, Mother Tirop, it's an interesting insights. I wanted you to continue and continue. <laughs> there are so many things we can talk about what Tennis Kenya is doing. Yeah. Like uh, we do many events in the year, we do for the juniors. Yeah. We run eight junior events in the year and uh, th they are ITF junior ranking points. Mm -hmm. When we started these uh, events, 10 years ago and they are self-sponsored yeah. we don't actually go out uh, our east african players and kenyan players used to be beaten in the first round yeah. but the last one we had in july the two we had in july in Arabi club for example the winners were the two legs who are both kenyan yeah. albert njogu won the two legs angela was winner of one leg and the other one she was the runner-up in doubles the two weeks was won by derek who is a Kenyan at the ITF Center, and uh, Ryan Randiek, who is also at the ITF Center. Yeah. We have three players at the ITF Center. Yeah, okay. We have Ryan, mm -hmm. we have Derek, and we have Angela. Yeah, okay. And they, you see they were all in the yeah. finals. Even Angela w and her partnered with Aisha yeah. from Burundi to win doubles the two weeks. So it's no longer business as usual for mm -hmm. people to come and think that it's good to meet a Kenyan 
in the final as it was before. Yeah, okay. Ten years ago, they used to be like, you're lucky, you have a Kenyan. Yeah. But now they, 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 they are worried because Kenyans now are, and the East Africans in general, are actually taking advantage of these events that we bring, which are usually very expensive. Like, for example, this event had seven Kenyans. If we were to send them out for these events, it yes. would have costed us a lot of money yeah. and the option would be not to send them. Yeah. So we really want to appeal to corporates to be able to support so that we hold more of these events here. The other thing that we do as Tennis Kenya is um, wheelchair tennis. Yeah. We have a wheelchair team for men and women who have, we, women have qualified three times to go for World Team Cup. We've hosted the qualifiers for the last seven years. They've just approved last week for us to host it again for the eighth year in February. And we do one futures for wheelchair. So we are an all uh, round uh, federation that we give equal opportunities to all our players. We now train a deaf team that are going to, I think, uh, Singapore for World Deaf Championships in October. Yeah. So we're still breaking new grounds in terms of participation and allowing everybody to be, enjoy the game of tennis. Okay. So we're doing a lot of that. And uh, this probably the president will tell you that uh, we are yet, we are on process of building our own tennis center at Kasarani and it's uh, we're really pushing once we have that facility I'm sure we should be able to hold more of these international events because uh, Nairobi club has been challenging in terms of the courts the surface and the weather when the weather is bad it's difficult to play but uh, the plans are to build uh, 16 hard courts and eight clay courts at uh, Kasarani that will mean we can hold any events any time and that will be a really milestone we also have a national tennis program that we are trying to mirror the itf center because we want to take the benefits of the itf center being in kenya borrow on what they are doing right and so that we can have a national tennis center that has competitive players so we have that also and we also need sponsors for that because we have kids from uh, adva disadvantaged backgrounds yeah. and Tennis Kenya doesn't really have any means of source of income apart from maybe membership yeah. uh, to sustain such programs yeah, okay. so that's what we are doing I think you're doing a lot of things and all the best in all the planning I hope to see Tennis uh so this is what the sponsors want. We will, we will, we will. You can always count on KUTV to support you in any tournament anywhere, actually. Asante sana bona, Madam Martha. All the best in all the endeavors and the plans of Tennis Kenya. We hope to see more of tennis and things keep... We want to see more players uh, breaking the inter, in the international stages and being able to perform well. Asante sana. Well, Florence, you heard it from Mother uh, Tirop Exemption. Uh, I think he, uh, she has uh, shared a lot of insights in terms of the, of the t uh, tennis Kenya and some of the plans that they're having. I think it's exceptional to hear. Uh, even they're, they're, they're still on course to make sure that they can be able to, uh, rec to build their own court. I think those are some of the developments that you would want to hear uh, from a different federation in the country. I think uh, those are actually even the changing things that we want to uh, hear. As I mentioned earlier, uh, Sadana Himan, from Burundi, who is seeded eighth in the world. I'll be talking on Mahan Jain from India, an exemptional player who is seeded uh, first in the world. It's going to be an exciting one. As much as uh, we don't have a Kenyan, I think we still be having a lot of tennis action uh, come tomorrow. It's going to be exemptional. Uh, I think, Flora, we should be uh, we should start a double a mixed double team. Uh, what do you think about it? Uh, all right, uh, I think that's a, that's a good idea. Uh, if we have the right coach. I know of a coach who can tr uh, train us very well. His name is Joe. And guess what? Why am I saying about Joe? Because uh, Joe is known to be a coach that... Um, Don't worry about... No, a majority of women tennis players can trace their roots yeah. back to Coach yeah. Joe. So if, if Coach Joe is our, is our coach, then <laughs> perhaps I would, I would want that. Who would you want to become coach? We have a with? coach. We have a team. I think that we are looking for a team manager. A team manager is uh, Michael Quendo. <laughs> Michael Quendo. Yes. I, I, I don't trust that man with my money. Uh, so we look for someone else. <laughs> but we, me and Muta will be on one team yeah. and the other team will be you and Samson Jira and then we can have a, a wonderful match. Yeah. <laughs> but, but anyway, that's something we should be working on and later we can be able to have a team that can be able to perform exemptionally well uh, in different competitions. Asante Sana Florence, back to you in studio. Uh, once we have any conversation, we are going to make sure that we uh, provide you with the latest update from Beboni School. All right. Uh, 